Hi, it's Ian from Huge Menace. I've been modeling this heavy duty sci-fi crate and blender using ND. I love to understand how a concept design like this comes together. So I thought I'd do a breakdown of this model and explain how I made it and what I was thinking about when considering the design. Let's dive into it. I created this model using ND, our free add-on for Blender that makes it easy to use a non-destructive workflow. So let's take a look at the parts piece by piece. Here you can see I'm just isolating the body and the lid, and I'm gonna to go to the modifier stack, which is really the magic of the non-destructive process. And I'm gonna start turning off uh, various modifiers that help construct these basic shapes. In the very early stages of this design, what I'm thinking about is establishing a silhouette. I'm using a flat profile and I'm mirroring this. I'm adding bevels and kind of a chamfered bottom. And I'm thinking about trying to break the box. I don't want it to be a completely simple and boring box. So I establish this base profile. Next, I add some thickness to these profiles. I'm considering the overall proportions and silhouette from multiple angles and I decide I need to add another element of interest. This is a heavy duty crate, so I add these supporting uh, kind of frames, these metal frames, and this really introduces a much more interesting overall silhouette that will make the shape and form read better from all kinds of different angles. ND has a lot of functionality built in, including the silhouette option in the viewport menu. This just helps to ensure you're not being distracted by those internal shapes and details. Let's take a look at how these support elements were constructed. If I turn off the modifiers here, you can see that I actually just started with a really simple rectangle. From there, I've beveled some corners and rounded others to create a more interesting profile. I added some thickness and I constructed similar profiles which became a difference booleans to carve out the inner area of these frames. What I'm thinking about here in terms of design is how to introduce a bit more complexity and variety to this shape, uh, even from multiple angles. I then mirrored this across the X and Y axes. I like how this support element introduces a big, medium, small hierarchy to the overall form. I created a similar lid support, and this really helped to break the top half of the silhouette and make it more interesting. Now I start to consider the internal shapes. Visual hierarchy is really important, so I'm still thinking about big, medium and small shapes. I'm considering what are the large kind of internal details that can create some interest on these overall surfaces. When designing, it's important to switch your focus between form and functionality. I like how these elements also introduce some structural support to the side of the body and the top of the lid. The lid still needed some additional interest and support, so I added these ribs that run along the length. I was careful that these didn't divide the lid into three even segments, which would be visually predictable. So I left a wider gap in the middle. I decided to add a similar support element to the body. And considering functionality, I wondered maybe it'd be nice to have a lifting point because this is a heavy duty crate that might need some help from a crane or a vehicle. Another benefit here is how these introduce a small shape to the silhouette hierarchy. I used a difference boolean to carve out a space for a latch to hook onto the lid. I cut out a similar shape from the side of the body. And you might notice a detail here, that angled surface. That's a deliberate design affordance or signifier I added that helps kind of guide the hand into and underneath the latch so that you can open the lid. Speaking of the latch, let's take a look at how that was created. This crate is about 1.6 meters long. So I decided to not have a hinge. I thought that was impractical. Instead, I mirrored this latch uh, across both sides. If we break it down, it just starts with a simple profile. Add a bevel, do a profile extrude, solidify to add some thickness, and then a little bevel to just round it off. 
The latch needed a bit more detail, so I added these ribbed gripping areas that also act as an affordance to indicate you can grab onto that latch and open it. Once you start adding details like this, it's really easy to get carried away. So I stepped back and considered, what are some of the larger shapes I need to think about first? I used a boolean to cut out a space for your hands to grip under the center of the lid when lifting. And I noticed that the ends lack detail, so I added these notches uh, to make sure they're a bit more interesting. If you're really observant, you may notice that I'm clustering detail around edge boundaries. This helps create visual focus as well as areas of rest in between. I added handles to the end and chose to use four of them because it's quite a heavy crate. I also cut out a little rebate in the body here, again creating an affordance and kind of neatly tucking the handles away. The handles lacked some detail and smaller shapes, so I added these grips, which also makes them more comfortable. And you can see here, it's really simple. It just starts with a profile that gets extruded. And then I just add these little ribs in an array and bevel them out to soften them. At this stage, I'm pretty happy with the overall form, but it feels a bit too symmetrical. So I decide to add an element to the lid to create a bit more interest and also a bit of asymmetry. Don't ask me what this is, it's just some kind of metal plate with a bunch of details to make it look interesting. I started with a simple profile and used a vertex bevel to round the corners. I gave it some thickness and a bevel. And I cut out a few little details to add additional interest. Again, thinking about sort of big, medium and small shapes, even within this small element of the overall design. Zooming out, I realized that the design needed some additional asymmetric elements, so I added this little panel to the side of the body. I'm happy with the overall design. It seems to read well and it looks good from multiple angles, but it's time to think about details. So I added a small bevel to soften all the edges. I needed some more small details, so I added these little notches to the design that are kind of clustered around the handles and just provide a little bit more interest. I gave a similar treatment to the lid, adding a bevel, and I decided to repeat the notch design element to create a bit of unity uh, across the design. So I added that to the end as well as lined up with the uh, notches in the body on the lid. I noticed a bit of a geometry or shading issue, so I zoomed in on this area of the lid to investigate. This kind of thing can happen when you're using a non-destructive workflow, and it turns out that the bevel's creating some overlapping geometry. If I turn on the loop slide option, it seems to clear it up mostly. I could go on adding more detail, but I'm pretty happy with the design at this stage. As a last check, I just want to have a look at the silhouette from multiple angles. I really like from this view how those little triangles create a negative space. When I look at it from the side, it's okay. It probably could be a bit more interesting, but I'm happy with that. Viewing it from the top, it's a fairly complex silhouette. Possibly could be more dynamic with some more interesting larger shapes, but I'm satisfied overall. In perspective view, the overall design reads pretty well. The thing I'm happiest about is those little negative spaces created by the body and lid supports. I think that really sells the kind of chunky, uh, heavy duty feel of this particular design. As a final detail pass, I decided I needed to add some decals and text. I kept this pretty simple, little tiny triangles that point towards the handle. And then I added various bits of text to the little body access panel on the side here, uh, some text on top, and then a little bit of information about the weight capacity of the cargo crate. You'll see in a moment just how much these little details add to the overall design. To finish the model, I set up a basic environment and scene, and I added some materials, including little details of scratches and, and edgeware. The biggest decision I'm making at this stage is color. I'm using a 60, 30, 10 guideline. And that's a common thing you see in graphic and 
user interface design. Where there's a dominant coverage of 60% of one color, usually a neutral, uh, there's a 30% coverage of a contrasting color, in this case, the white lid. And then 10% is left for really intense and saturated bright colors. In this case, I've used yellow. Because saturated colors command so much attention, I'm being really careful just to use them sparingly in areas of visual focus. Overall, I really enjoyed designing and modeling this heavy duty crate. I tried to keep fundamental proportion, shape hierarchy and detailed distribution principles in mind throughout the process. My aim for this video was to provide a little insight into the design process. So I hope you found this helpful. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and consider joining our Discord community. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.